I'm Jason Zavarella, Product Manager at Canto Audio, and I'm here to clear the air on DAX. DAX are one of the more confusing things for beginners to wrap their brain around. If you read forums or participate in any audio discussions online, you'll inevitably see this exact interaction pop up. Hey, I want to upgrade my computer speakers. What should I get? And the very first reply will be a DAC. Real helpful. No mention of what a DAC is, why you need one, or what scenario it's utilized in. So allow me to be the helpful, anonymous, friendly audio nerd who's gonna actually explain some things. So this video is entitled, What is a DAC? But I'm really gonna cover when am I using a DAC? Because understanding that means you've successfully wrapped your brain around what a DAC is, what it's doing, and what situations require the use of a DAC. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at actual questions our customer support team has received about DACs over the past year. And then later in the video, we'll answer them. I must warn you, if you're well-versed in DACs, these questions may be confusing. <clears throat> if I'm using the RCA input on your speaker, am I utilizing the built-in DAC? If I plug my phone's headphone out into your speaker's aux input, am I using the DAC of the phone or the speakers? Can I use an external USB DAC if your speakers already have a DAC built in? Can I run both at the same time? My Blu-ray player has a sticker on the front that says Hi-Res DAC. If I connect it to your speakers with optical, am I using the Blu-ray player's DAC? When I switch between phono and line on your speakers, am I enabling or disabling the DAC? <clears throat> so if after going over those questions, you're feeling sorry for our support team, you can probably dip out of this video right now. But if you were just nodding along when I was reading them, well, this video is for you. So let's get started. Let's start with the basics. DAC, D-A-C. DAC is an acronym. It stands for Digital to Analog Converter. When we want to play audio, there are two formats it's recorded or saved to, analog or digital. And what's the difference between them? Analog is a constantly variable form of information, whereas digital is incremental. And I'll explain using clocks as an example. An analog clock, a circular clock with hands and a dial, has 60 markers on it to show how many minutes have elapsed but the minute hand still sweeps in between those minute markers so you can tell approximately how many seconds have passed. Compare that to a digital clock's minute increments. It only shows you the minute you're on. It's fixed. No matter how close you zoom in, it's always gonna be 1208. And until it changes to 1209, you really don't know how many seconds have elapsed. So an analog clock is constantly variable, always changing. There are no fixed increments like a digital clock. And we can relate audio to that clock analogy. A record has a single groove that wiggles back and forth and it's constantly changing. There are no steps or jaggies. You can zoom in on it and it's still nice and curvy. It's analog. A CD, on the other hand, stores information like frequency and volume in discrete increments. It's like a staircase rather than a hill. It approximates a smooth, constantly changing analog signal. And guess what reads a digital file's incremental levels and turns it into a nice, smooth analog curve? The DAC. Now, why do we even have to do this? Why are we complicating things? Well, there's two reasons. One, you can't store analog files on a computer because that's just not how computers work. Computers are binary machines. They store data in chunks. There's no way you can store a constantly changing signal as that would require infinite storage as you'd have to capture infinite increments between levels. Think back to that analog clock analogy. You can keep zooming in infinitely between those minute markers to see seconds, milliseconds, and so on. The second reason you have to do this complicated transition from digital to analog is that speakers are analog devices. A woofer on a speaker is a physical object that moves back and forth hundreds and thousands of times a second to reproduce the sound waves the original instrument or singer was emitting. It's constantly, there's that word again, traveling in and out smoothly so there are no fixed rigid steps. So quite simply, a DAC takes the intangible binary code in a digital audio file 
reads the fixed steps, and smooths it out into a constantly variable curvy signal using math. And what is that signal made out of? Voltage. It turns the digital file into a constantly fluctuating electrical signal that your analog speakers can actually use. So now that you have basic understanding of what a DAC is, let's go back to those questions. Question one, if I'm using the RCA input on your speaker, am I utilizing the built-in DAC? No, RCA is an analog input. You need to feed RCA a constantly changing electrical signal that can be amplified by the speaker's amplifier and then fed into the driver that reproduces the audio that physically moves air. There's no DAC on the RCA input as the sound is going to be already analog. So that leads us to the next question. If I plug my phone's headphone out into your speaker's aux input, am I using the DAC of the phone or the speakers? If you're using a digital device like a phone, it can only store digital music. So if you're streaming from Spotify and you're successfully hearing music on our speakers, it's had to have gone through a DAC at some point in the process. If your phone is connected to the speakers through aux, an analog input that only accepts voltage it had to have been converted from digital to analog before it hit the speaker. The conversion had to have happened in the phone. You'd be using the phone's built-in DAC. Next question. Can I use an external USB DAC if your speakers already have a DAC built in? Can I run both at the same time? You can use an external DAC with our speakers, but the point of that external DAC is to take digital audio and turn it into analog. It's outputting analog, a constantly fluctuating voltage, which needs to go to an analog input like RCA or aux. It's not a digital signal anymore, so it can't go through a second DAC. You can't run two DACs at the same time. Let's move on to something a little trickier. My Blu-ray player has a sticker on the front that says high res DAC. If I connect it to your speakers with optical, am I using the Blu-ray player's DAC? So this particular Blu-ray player has a DAC in it, but it's connected to the optical input of our speaker. An optical is a digital connection. It's not sending a fluctuating electrical signal. It's sending pulses of light. It's sending data. So if the speaker is being sent data, a digital signal, and we've established that our speaker's amp and driver are analog, then that means it has to be converted into an analog signal before our speakers can utilize it. It needs a DAC and that DAC will be in our speakers since we know a digital signal is being sent to our speakers. So that Blu-ray player, even though it says it has a DAC, we're not using it in this instance. The Blu-ray player is likely to have two audio outputs, one digital output, which we're using, and an analog output, likely RCA. Now, if your Blu-ray player was connected to the speaker through RCA, you would be utilizing the built-in Blu-ray player's DAC. Final question. When I switch between photo and line on your speaker, am I enabling or disabling the DAC? So we've already established that turntables and records are analog devices, so no conversion is needed. That little switch on some of our speakers simply boosts the quiet signal that comes from a turntable so that it can be as loud as a modern device. No DAC is part of the process at all, which is pretty rare in this digital world we live in. To summarize, audio needs to be converted to analog at some point since the drivers in your speakers need constantly fluctuating voltage to move in and out. You should always be able to determine where the DAC is being utilized in your audio chain just by knowing what inputs you're using. RCA and aux are analog. USB, optical, and coax are digital. If you have an audio device connected to the analog input of our speakers, a DAC was used before it hit the speaker. If you have an audio device connected to the digital input of our speaker, the DAC inside of our speaker is being utilized. So now that you've watched this, I hope you know what a DAC is and when you're using it. If you like this video and you wanna learn more, check out the other videos on this channel and make sure to subscribe. I'm Jason from Canto Audio. See you in the next video.